Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Learn Live. I think it's called the Hybrid uh, Sessions or something like that. <laughs> I forget. Uh, my name is Pierre Roman. I'm a senior technical, senior uh, cloud advocate at Microsoft. And with me, I have Nate. Nate, how you doing? Hey, Pierre. Great. Excited to be here and excited to be on Learn TV. I think it's our... Uh... Azure Hybrid Study Hall that we're talking about today. We're going to be going through all of Microsoft Azure's hybrid technologies and solutions like Azure Arc, Azure Stack HCI, and all the segments, and really excited to uh, kick things off. Yes. And my role at Microsoft is I'm a product marketing manager for Azure Arc, one of our hybrid technologies. Yes. Uh, today, we are backed by a wonderful team. Uh, first of all, we have uh, Laurent, who's been our producers, so you can't see him, but hello, Laurent. And our moderator is John Joyner, uh, Senior Director of Technology, Microsoft MVP at Accountability. Uh, so thanks, John. And uh, if you have any questions, this is the place to ask them. So we're going to be talking about uh, Azure Arc, an introduction to Azure Arc. In the chat, whether you're on Learn TV or YouTube or Twitch, or whichever you want, uh, make sure to put your questions in the chat and we will try to get to them uh, as they come or whether or not, uh, or at the end if we don't have time. But if you want to follow along, so aka.ms slash learn live 2022-04-21A, we have the greatest uh, URLs. Uh, but if you go to this uh, URL, you will be able to follow along the learn module that we're covering today. And the learn module we're covering today, again, is uh, introduction to Azure Arc enabled server. What does that mean? What does it eat in winters? And uh, we'll again try to cover it all. All right. So let's get going. Yeah, let's get started. So, you know, as Pierre said, we're going to really try to be answering a few questions today. Like, what are the characteristics of Azure Arc enabled servers? What are the core capabilities of Azure Arc enabled servers? And also, what are some of the uh, management and, and governance and security things that you can talk about with Azure Arc enabled servers? And so, you know, why don't we uh, why don't we get kicked off and started here? And I can I can start us off. So. Let's talk about what Azure Arc is and what, what that really means. So Azure Arc really promises to bridge the gap between the on-premises and cloud environments. And so maybe long ago, uh, not too long ago, but you kind of had to make this decision of, are we going to be on-premises or are we going to be in the cloud like Azure? And those two systems maybe don't really talk to each other that much. You might be running your cloud items through the Azure Resource Manager and using you know, great tools like Azure Monitor and, and security and governance policies. And then for on-premises, maybe you're using System Center or Windows Admin Center or a myriad of other you know, third-party things that you've kind of hodgepodge together to get your policies and your, your SQL servers and your Windows servers and your Linux servers updated. But Azure Arc now bridges the gap between those two by bringing the cloud technology and that control plane of Azure into your on-premises environment. And specifically for Arc for Server, it does it for your on-premises Windows and Linux servers. And it also does it if those servers are running in other clouds, like perhaps AWS or GCP. So a great kind of you know, hypothetical customer scenario, say you're, you know, we always use the customer uh, Kintoso. So let's say you're a uh, medium-sized financial services company and you've got lots of uh, specific data like customer data, transaction data, financial information, and uh, you have offices all around the world. Maybe you're headquartered in the UK, and you're entirely you're operating completely on premises. And so that compute environment has physical and virtual servers, and it's consisting of a mix of uh, Windows servers and Linux distributions. And so with that diversity, you're kind of also 
uh, siloed operationally. Maybe you've got a data center team here, a data center team in your other countries where you operate, and each of them are kind of running in parallel, but there's no central governance or, or IT policies. And so now that Contoso team and maybe the developers, maybe that bank has a mobile app and your developers are building applications in the cloud and then kind of throwing them over the window into the IT team and say, oh, hey, make sure this is like highly available and it stays up and running. So uh, now you've got this central IT team who's been tasked with maintaining all of their on-premises servers, ensuring high availability, ensuring compliance and security. And then you've got all of these developers and the, you know, this innovation arm of the, of the bank uh, building applications and cloud native uh, other systems that you need to manage. And so Azure Arc can come in and say, hey, we can take your things running in Azure, your things running on-prem, bring them all together into one consistent control plane. And uh, Pierre, did I leave anything out there? What do you think is maybe the way that you typically describe Azure Arc? Well, the way uh, it's, it, Azure Arc is um, sometimes misunderstood. Um, start with, First of all, uh, in 2019, I think it was Jason Zander that stood up at Ignite and said that uh, hybrid is our customer's end state. So we've kind of gone away from the the marketing message of of everything move everything to the cloud. Like we realize that hybrid is the end state that the majority of our customers are going to end up with. So we needed to figure out a way to kind of link those two, as you mentioned. Uh, the way I explain. Um, Azure Arc, and I always kind of come back to the fact that Azure Arc is more of a facilitator product. Mm -hmm. it, it allows your on-premises uh, or any other machines, whether they're on uh, other clouds or physical or virtual on VMware or virtual on Hyper-V, yeah. no matter where they are, it gives them an identity and surface them up in the portal. That's that's the, the 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 main thing it does is it actually identifies and links those machine to the portal so that you can then deploy other services that you may have in Azure such as uh, log analytics and uh, Azure Monitor, uh, Azure Backup, Azure Automation, Update Management, all of that good stuff. You can now easily take those services and deploy them and and apply them to those machines that have now been identified and linked through Azure Arc. Of course, it does a lot more than just that link. It like enables Kubernetes uh, on servers. It enables a whole bunch of different things. Uh, but that, that's the way I start when I start, when somebody asks who's never been uh, uh, exposed to Azure Arc, uh, why, uh, how it works. Yeah, absolutely. So let's, let's talk about why customers would, would use Azure Arc. And just as you said, uh, you know, a few years ago during Ignite, you know, we recognize that customer environments and application requirements are evolving. And that doesn't mean that you have to just live in the cloud for uh, regulatory reasons or for uh, data, uh, data residency or latency reasons. You're going to want to keep stuff on premises and you might want to run stuff at the edge. And so if you look at our customers' environments today, they have hundreds thousands of applications. They've got virtual machines, databases, containers, Kubernetes, serverless. They've got tons of different languages that they're developing in, and they have a really diverse infrastructure. Just as you said, uh, maybe they're managing a data center. Maybe they have a hoster. They're maintaining VMware. Uh, they're maintaining VMware. Maybe they're also using Hyper-V. And to add to this complexity, there's different uh, development tools that your developers are using. And so the key questions we really hear are, how can I govern and secure my resources wherever they are? How can I bring the innovation from the cloud into my existing infrastructure? You know, infrastructure is expensive. Perhaps you're not ready to phase out of your on-premises investments, and, but you want to bring the goodness of the cloud into that infrastructure. And how do you modernize your local data centers with cloud infrastructure and extend compute and AI to the edge? And so for our solution for that, um, I think we've long understood that Microsoft started in the on-premises world. Then we have Azure, this great goodness, and now we're bringing a lot of those together. And that's what Azure Arc is. And yeah, so, I'm, I'm really, I'm really thrilled, uh, mostly about the security and the governance uh, part of Azure, uh, Azure Arc. Meaning, 
when you have policies, like I know on-prem, like uh, group policies and all of that, there are ways to manage uh, the, the compliance of all of those machines. But now you can take a compliance policy uh, or initiative or whatever you want to call it uh, from uh, Azure and then apply it to all your servers. So for example, like password uh, complexity, uh, making sure that you like, have the 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 uh, always up to date based on your compliance or your governance, uh, and all that is surfaced up and enabled through Azure. So I'm really really um, a big fan of that part. Yeah, absolutely, and that's and that's what we're going to be focusing on today. Uh, this this learn live study hall is going to be really about Azure Arc enabled servers, and so we're going to be talking about the security, the governance, the management you get for your on-premises and multi-cloud servers. And certainly in the other Learn Live, we're gonna talk about things like Azure Stack HCI or Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes and dev tools and modern apps. So make sure you tune into those. Um, but really, if you think about with Azure Arc, just as we said, it's this bridge between Azure and your other environments, your on-prem, multi-cloud and edge environments where we can bring our app data and AI services to you so you can truly build and, and innovate anywhere. Uh, and, and that aligns with Microsoft's mission. We want to empower you to, uh, you know, empower your organization wherever you are. And so that's why uh, that's why we're, we're really confident that Azure Arc is going to be for you. And I think the most important thing is that it's a single set of skills and processes. So perhaps back in the day where you have these, you know, handmade dashboards and you're trying to align a policy built for on-prem that you're trying to put into the cloud or you're trying to ensure that your security settings work in all these different applications where each one's a little different you can now have one control plane and that is azure and that's no longer limited to azure public cloud it can be brought to wherever you're running your services yeah i'm so i'm really um when you really think about it for an IT pros perspective or an operations person's yeah. perspective, it was a time where you had stuff in 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 the one cloud and some in Azure and some on prem and some at a hoster. So you ended up with having to manage like four different set of tools right. in order to have like management of your machine. So the uh, one tool may be doing things a little different. So you didn't have a unified way of doing this. And this what is uh, being addressed. And when we look at, uh, if we can switch to my slides there, uh, Laura. And if we look at the characteristics of an Azure uh, or Arc enabled server is, is really like we just mentioned in the intro is to bring all those capabilities to your machines wherever they may be. So it's, it's the reach play where you can, from your management portal, whether you're using PowerShell, Azure CLI, uh, REST APIs uh, or, or, or others, to be able to reach all of those machines regardless where they are. So whether it's Windows, Linux, VM, bare metals, and you can do this at scale, obviously. A consistent way of configuring your extension. When we first started with the on-prem and hybrid, yeah, you could collect the logs from an on-prem machine to, to Azure, but it wasn't easy. You needed to figure out the right agent and how do you install it and how do you configure it so that it sends the right information to the right log analytics workspace so that it can be ingested and then analyzed and then you can get value from that uh, information. With Azure Arc, one of the characteristics, it takes care of that for you. So when you say enable um, patch management, for example, Azure Arc will then figure out the proper agent to put it on. It'll drop it to its own agent that's sitting on that machine and install it properly and configure it properly to allow for that centralized management without having to decide on every machine, oh, do I need this agent or do I need this agent? Especially if you're in a mixed environment with multiple versions of Linux, multiple versions of Windows, that's that configuration is taken care of for you. Uh, we mentioned the, govern, the governance part. So built-in Azure policies or custom policies, you decide. Um, 
There are a number of built-in ones, but if you want to build your own, you can, and then apply them to your entire data center. And when I say data center, I mean like your entire um, environment, whether it's the on-cloud part or whether it's the on-prem part. Like It applies to all uh, equally. And of course, because of uh, our focus on security, Azure Arc enables through log analytics and through uh, collecting data from your machines, uh, applying security. So uh, Azure Active Directory Management Identity, uh, Server Security Baseline, Role-Based Access Control. So you can have a, and, and this is the fact uh, in a lot of places where uh, you have the team that manages a certain set of devices. And then you have other people that need to have access to view what the logs are, what the uh, the status is, but you don't want them to actually be able to change anything because change management, you want to restrict it to the to to a core group that basically can document it and do it properly. Uh, so with uh, role-based access control, you can actually give uh, only the access that's needed to the people that are needed. So, so you have you can have like your management to be readers so they can see all of the information but they can't change anything, which in my case, it's always a good thing. You give the managers enough information, but don't actually let them do anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I see we have a, a question uh, in the chat here that I wanna make sure we answer of, you know, although okay. we can manage servers from other cloud providers, can we also integrate Azure DevOps pipelines and those servers using Arc? Uh, yes. So using Arc, um, I'm not quite sure about pipelines themselves, but you can uh, integrate Azure uh, DevOps uh, practices, but you can also use like uh, Azure Automation because there is an agent for that where you could actually send uh, commands to that server and then that server will uh, basically pull your content from a, a, a GitHub uh, repo or any other uh, installation process. Uh, process. Um, I'm not a DevOps person. Uh, we'd have to maybe ask uh, uh, Jay Destro or uh, April Edwards to like drill into this. Uh, but I believe it uh, enables uh, at least a portion of the DevOps uh, practices to your uh, enabled servers. Yeah, I was I was gonna say right on. If you if you have a, a Git repo that you are constantly you know pushing code to from Visual Studio or something like that. Uh, and and that's a that's a hybrid repo or something like that. Uh, it, it will certainly be able to push those updates to those servers or those Kubernetes clusters uh, where they're running. Yep. Yeah. And so, do we want to uh, let's see, move on, Pierre, to talk about you know where Arc enabled servers runs, and then we can start getting into our, our learn module here. Absolutely. So the Arc enabled server uh, we mentioned it before regardless what the machines are. And currently what we support of Windows servers, multiple versions, uh, SUSE Linux, Red Hat, uh, Ubuntu, and of course, uh, AWS uh, Linux. Uh, and all of those OSs uh, will be uh, able to take care or take advantage of the uh, services such as Policy, Defender, Sentinel, Monitor, Log Analytics, and so on. So there's, there's a, a, a number of services that we can deploy once you've identified and enabled arc enabled your servers and i think you know it's so it's so great just seeing all these services that you can bring to your on premises environment you know i was i was talking with a customer who has a data center in their office they use a, ho a third party hoster data center and they have a bunch of uh windows server 2012 r2s 2016s and 2019s that they actually have running in Azure just as, as Windows Server VMs. And, mm -hmm. and their uh, director of IT and their networking team was saying, yeah, you know, we used to have to come in on a Saturday night at, at midnight and between like midnight and 4 a.m., we would just update all of our servers. And now with Azure Arc, they were able to just completely automate that process. So the same policies that they're writing in Azure for those servers can now be brought exactly into their on-premises environment and it can be done with just a few lines of code truly and setting the right policy and, and update systems and and that was able to just save them one an immense amount of time it made their it team way more efficient 
And it also kind of takes out that error of, oh, did we really get every server? Do we need to double check it? I mean, if every server is ARC enabled, it you know basically saves you that need to start coming in uh, you know from midnight to 4 a.m. on a Saturday and uh, and and you know manually going through it. So I just thought that was a great example that uh, you know one of our customers recently told me about. Yeah, it's not like we've never had to uh, wear the pager and answer it at 3 a.m. on Friday right. night or something. Right. Uh, I'm I'm actually uh, very happy to see that uh, Azure Auto Manage is also a part of that mm -hmm. uh, because Auto Manage. Um, you basically like you're, you're uh, ensuring that your backup, that your log analytics, like all of that pre-configuration, when you innate, when you turn on auto manage, it actually makes sure that everything is set. Your backups, your protection of those VMs, everything uh, in one in one um, in one step, without right. having to say, did I deploy this? Did I enable man uh, update management? Did I enable backups of it? It all done, so I'm very happy about to, to see that that one is now part of the um, the uh, Azure Arc enabled services. Right, it's I think it's a great example of how the same innovation that we're driving in public Azure, like auto manage for you know your VMs that sit in Azure, can now be brought into your you know edge multi cloud hybrid environments because now you can auto manage your Arc enabled servers, and it just continues to make your job more efficient. Uh, it saves you a lot of time and, and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Um, now, if we look at what an ARC enabled server actually looks like or what it does or how it happens, mm -hmm. it relies on the ARC uh, connected machine agent. So I mentioned that at the beginning, though it's like the, the, it's almost like the Lord of the Rings that gets the one agent to rule them all, where once the Azure ARC connected machine agent is installed locally, uh, it does establish that logical connection. So it creates a, a, a VM ID uh, in Azure, makes the link, and then starts uh, answering and listening to those uh, those prompts from Azure uh, in order to deploy new services or to collect data or to actually act uh, on a command that you've given through Azure Arc. One thing we can do uh, is how about we do a very quick uh, demo of how we enable, uh, ARC enable uh, some servers. Great. All right. So let's start with the Azure Arc uh, server onboarding, Laura, if you will. Uh, just uh, as, a, um, as a note, uh, those videos are recorded. Uh, not because we wanted to, it's no snow smoke and mirror is that during the demos at some point uh, it there's a portion of time that has to go on for the uh, everything to be done and we wanted to take that video and cut out those parts where we're just sitting there watching the spinning donuts in the middle of our screen uh, to have to make better use of our time so if we go with the azure arc uh, onboarding Fairly easy, when, right now I've got like a demo uh, environment and all I have to do is create a new resource and I'll just say servers and select Azure Arc. Now I can create my Azure Arc environment and at this point, if I pause this, uh, you can see that you can add a single servers, that you can add multiple server and when you add multiple server, it generates a script and then the, the only difference between the first two, a single or multiple, is that when you're doing multiple, it's not going to ask you for the password because you do need to be an administrative uh, access to those machines. So it's not going to ask you to uh, um, authenticate and it's not going to ask you to log in to Azure to initiate that connection manually. When you're doing multiple servers, you create a service principle in Azure mm -hmm. and then you pass on that service principles ID in secret uh, inside your script. So they, that's that service principle only as access to create that link. It doesn't have access to anything else, so it is still secure, but that's the only difference. But you could also uh, add in other ways. You have to make sure that you have HTTPS access to that environment. You select which OS you want, if you're gonna use a public endpoint or a proxy server. And then you add some predefined uh, tags. And those tags are important because it allows you to later on uh, organize your machine. So whether they're in resource groups or whether or not you're going to uh, apply 
uh, rolling updates to specific location. And then it just generates a script that you download and install on your machine. And once you've got it on your machine, it's just a matter of accessing that machine, running this using a um, elevated privilege um, PowerShell. Okay, I was just waiting for this to turn. So I'm on a server in my Hyper-V box uh, under the desk here, and I open my PowerShell with admin, and I just go to the download um, directory or folder, and then execute the script. Everything else is built into that. It will install all of the dependencies, make sure that everything is set properly, and go and download the appropriate agent, meaning earlier when we talked about this, like depending on the version you have and uh, uh, the OS you have, you need a specific agent. It gets all of that. Then at this one, because we did a single server, it wants me to authenticate to Azure. So I will use that link that's there and the authentication code, go to Edge, browse to that uh, location, once I've got that location, insert the code. And then authenticate to that Azure um, instance or, or tenant. So I'm using my uh, Hotmail account because this is a demo environment. I've approved it on my phone because MFA, multi-factor authentication. If you haven't set it up, please set it up. Once it's done, you can close that and it'll go and it waits and it, the, the, the script pulls Azure until it sees that it's uh, successfully onboarded that server. And then from there, you can actually see uh, all of your servers in Azure once they've been onboarded. Onboarding is the first uh, part of it. Once it's onboarded, it does take a little bit of time for it to start reporting its data, reporting its status, reporting up its logs uh, that you have. But right now, uh, we have one server that's installed. We also have the same um, experience with the uh, Linux. So if we can do the uh, Azure Arc onboarding with the Linux, Laura, and this one is pretty much exactly the same uh, in terms of the beginning of it. So you create uh, things the exact same way. So you look at servers, you select Arc, everything's the same. The only difference is when you pick the OS that you're looking at, you end up having to pick Linux, of course. And then it installs... I'm just going to fast forward this a little bit because we've seen this. Then on my machine, I'm just SSH into my Linux server that's in my environment as administrator. So this was a brand new machine. I log into it and then I will execute the uh, script. Now that script and then Linux compared to uh, as opposed to Windows, uh, when you install a separate package, uh, you may have a whole bunch of dependencies. So by running that uh, onboarding script, uh, bash script, and authenticating properly, then it goes out and it'll, it'll download and install all of the uh, dependencies that are needed. It'll update all of the packages that are needed on that server. It'll go through all of that, process the triggers, process the libraries, and set it up as its own um, service so that runs uh, automatically. And at the end, you end up with the exact same um, experience in the Azure portal where those machines are now available for you to deploy other services to. I don't think we need to uh, see the rest because it's exactly the same and we'll get back to it in a little bit. So let's go back to the slides. So that's what an Arc enable server is. It's really just servers that you have, regardless where they are, that have installed the proper agent, connected the proper uh, subscription tenant with the uh, proper uh, um, authentication, and then it surfaces them up 
in Azure, uh, in your portal. And you can tell that the server is a little different because that server will have a slightly different a uh, icon and also it will show you uh, in there that it's a non-Azure machine in the description of that VM. And you can you know, see your ARC-enabled servers side by side with your VMs and other servers and your SQL servers all in the Azure portal. And when you add those tags, you can see you know, which ones are running in Ottawa, which ones are running in New York, which ones are running in Los Angeles. Um, and so by tagging your servers and by tagging perhaps maybe you're running certain VMs in you know, West US uh, in Azure, then you can, you know, group them geographically or, or however you want to do it. So it makes it really powerful when you can see just all of your resources, regardless of where they are uh, geographically and regardless if they're running in Azure, on-prem, in another cloud, they're they're all right there in the portal. Yeah. And, and there's a question on um, on YouTube that's, uh, that asks, uh, Ratan asks if uh, those demo servers are not hosted on Azure. Actually, for this particular demo, those servers are running on Hyper-V in a test box that I actually have under my desk. So I really wanted to simulate what you would have in your own environments where you have servers that are completely disconnected from Azure. So they're sitting in my ohm, uh, connected to the internet through a residential DSL uh, connection. Um, and so it doesn't really require that much in order to uh, enable a server for Arc. And, and one other, you know, fun way that if if you all at home are wanting to get started with Azure Arc and maybe you don't have a, a you know server box under your desk, um, we have uh, this thing called Azure Arc Box, and Arc Box is a virtual machine in Azure, but it replicates a VM or a server on premises. And so it comes with, I think, like a SQL server, a Windows server, an Ubuntu image, and it replicates exactly what it's like to manage your various servers with Azure Arc and that Arc-enabled server environment. But it's just all basically nested virtualization through a VM in Azure. Um, and it's a, it's a great way to get started if you want to check it out. Yeah, so yeah. ArcBox is basically taking advantage of nested virtualization to create a VM in Azure and on, on that VM, turn on Hyper-V and then run other uh, workloads on top of it, right. correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly it. Okay. Yeah, uh, um, Mr. Maurer has just joined us in the chat and he's like, yeah, he hears that uh, Arc is pretty cool. <laughs> it is, Thank it you, is Thomas. really cool. Uh, so if we go on to uh, what the uh, connected machine agent is, you can see from this slide, and there's lots of information on this slide, but the only thing I wanted you to uh, realize or to grasp is the fact that all of that communication is over HTTPS 443. So in a lot of cases, when you're in your own environments and you have the security group that locks up those firewalls at the edge of your enterprise. Uh, typically to open ports is an, uh, an understanding uh, of how it's going to be used, who's going to use it, what's at the other end and so on. And it typically can get uh, fairly arduous to convince your security group that you need to open a specific port to the internet. By using uh, HTTPS 443, that is by default in majority of environments already open. So, and it's, there's nothing that gets pushed in. It's always the agent that calls home and requests the data. So the connection is never initiated from Azure. It's always initiated from the agent, which is why when we're deploying and when we're onboarding it, we actually have to run it from the agent and it goes out to uh, Azure, connects, gets the information. So you can't, add a machine from Azure to onboard it uh, unless you've already pre-created that connection. Right. And I think, you know, breaking down the, the connected machine agent for, for Azure Arc, uh, you know, there's there's really three co core components to it. And if you're if you look at the, the slide kind of on the left side, you'll see those three buckets of the hybrid instance metadata service that just manages the uh, the identity and aligns it with Azure. Uh, then you have the guest configuration agent that provides in-guest policy and guest config functionality, such as like assessing whether the machine complies with your required policies. And last is the extension agent. So that manages the install, uninstall, 
and upgrade of VM extensions. So things like log analytics and the MMA extension uh, can all be accessed through that. So together, those kind of three components uh, constitute the connected machine agent. You can see how they connect to uh, Azure Resource Manager or log analytics um, and your Active Directory and authentication. Now, if we're looking at connectivity option, uh, I, we when we did the demo, we went really, really quickly uh, through that. But you really have three items or three ways to connect your server uh, to Azure. One is through a public endpoint via direct connection. So that's basically from your machine. It goes straight out to the internet, connects to an Azure endpoint, and Bob's your uncle. You're connected. Now, in environments where traffic is a bit more managed or controlled, uh, you can do it via a, a, pub, a proxy server. So you identify a proxy server on your uh, environment, in your uh, on-premises, and you connect through that proxy server uh, to Azure, therefore making sure that your security team is still happy because they can still manage and uh, monitor the connections uh, to and from the internet. And currently, in preview, we have uh, private endpoints over Express Route, meaning once that becomes GA, uh, and you can start using it now if you're uh, if you're testing it, uh, when that becomes GA, it provides you a very very robust and secure way of connecting your servers from wherever they may be to your Azure environment using that uh, encrypted tunnel, uh, that secure tunnel, because an express route is really just kind of like an MPLS segment uh, terminated both at your end in your data center and at our end uh, in our data centers. So it doesn't completely bypasses the public internet, uh, making it a lot more uh, secure. And the private endpoint also uh, adds to that. So the supported environment operating system, I just skipped that slide that just said, okay, then we we're gonna do the demo, but uh, we were already done that. Um, right now, uh, servers that are supported are 2008 R2, 2012, 16, 19, 2022, uh, including server core. Uh, however, if you're still running 2008 uh, servers and, and 2012 servers, um, you really need to start looking at potentially updating those servers. Um, 2008 we been with, uh, yeah, we're coming up with, uh, you know, end of support. And so uh, for, um, for 2008, I think we're in year two of our extended security updates. And if you migrate those servers to Azure, you can actually get free ESUs on Azure. And for uh, Windows Server 2012, um, we are nearing end of support and then the extended security updates i believe start in in 2023 or you can migrate to windows server 2022 uh, or upgrade you know lots of great functionality we uh we can get into that i'm sure later but shameless uh, yeah. plug exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah and like like nate nate said um um, upgrade or moving those servers to uh, azure gives you the those extended support uh, security updates um, I believe there's also a program uh, that will leverage ARC to facilitate uh, the same thing. I'm not quite sure if that's completely um, rolled out yet, but Still keep an eye out for that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. So uh, other than Windows servers, of course, Ubuntu, CentOS, SUSE Linux, Red Hat Enterprise, Amazon Linux, and Oracle Linux 7 uh, are all supported uh and that list will be growing uh, as more uh, OS, especially on the Linux side, uh, are vetted and uh, put into the list. And I want to call attention to a, a question, I think, from Ian on, on YouTube. Um, can you touch on how Azure Arc is licensed? Is it free? Uh, Ian, great question. So the, the pricing for Azure is it, Azure Arc to download and install the agent on your servers is completely free. And so if you want to be able to uh, go through that demo that Pierre did earlier, where you, uh, you know, abstract your on-premises agent or your multi-cloud agent or VM and put it into the uh, Azure portal so you can see it, that's completely free. Where we start charging for 
are the uh, are certain attach services. And so things like Azure Policy. If you want to set policies, it's $6 per server per month. If you want to use Microsoft Defender for cloud, there's a cost with that. I think kind of depending on the number of gigs you ingest there. And, and same for using Azure Monitor and Log Analytics. There are costs there, all depending on maybe the, the per gig ingestion. So for, for simply getting started with Arc, if you want to align all of your servers, use things like tags and, uh, and, and being able to see them all in your resource groups, that's completely free. And then yep. when you start using uh, kind of those really powerful native Azure services, that's when uh, there's a cost there. Yeah. And the cost would be no different than if you were ingesting that data from an Azure VM. Exactly. Right. So mm -hmm. so there's no, it, it's not like there's a catch here. Right. Um, and, and but you do have, if you're cost conscious, you have to if you're looking at uh, Azure Monitor and you want to start onboarding all of the logs from all of those machines. Because if you've got thousands of machines and you turn on all the logs and all the application logs, system logs, setup logs uh, in your like Windows Events Viewer um, the logs, then that will grow, right. and that can have a, an impact on how much you pay. So you want to make sure that you when you onboard those those logs and that that information to be ingested by log analytics, uh, that you are careful as to what you're selecting, uh, and don't just select everything because it's easy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Great, great question though on pricing. Yes, absolutely. Um, I typically try to stay away from licensing or or pricing options because. I'm on the tech end of things, not the <laughs> licensing end of things. Right. All right. So now if we go to the infrastructure uh, of ARC enabled servers, we can make sure that we can deploy and connect that information uh, that those machines uh, to all of those different services. And so the Azure portal is one. It's the real easy. You can just see your machines in your uh, resource groups, you can assign them, tag them. Nate's already gone through this. I really like the DSC, so desired configuration management, where you say on that on those groups of servers, uh, for example, IIS must run at all times. So even if somebody turns it off, uh, desired state configuration is going to turn it back on. Uh, of course, PowerShell, Windows admin server uh, gets to play in there as well. Um, you can use the Azure service principle uh, to onboard those machines and basically give those machines an identity uh, so that they actually have access to do what they need to do. But of course, you can deploy uh, that using Terraform, Ansible, group policies, or SCCM if you're still uh, in your environment uh, running those systems. So to deploy, I just did with the standard script, downloaded and manually ran it. But there is a number of different ways that you can make your life easier uh, by deploying it. Right. If you're one great use case, I think, is the Windows Admin Center side. If you're using Windows Admin Center uh, for your server administration and you go to that kind of Azure hybrid services bar in there, yep. it's super easy to connect uh, that server that you've, uh, uh, you know, maybe RDP'd into or something uh, to Azure Arc. And, you know, in WAC, it's just really a click of the button, or you can do it in all the other ways Pierre said. So we're we're trying to make it as easy as possible to uh, connect and arc enable your servers. Yes, if you're using Windows Admin Center, there are some prerequisites. So your yeah. your your machines have to be connected to your Azure subscription with uh, a, a service principle that's with the proper uh, yeah of missions. Uh, but once that's done, you can basically onboard directly from the hybrid center. Correct. Yeah. All right, so we've done the first section of our learn module. Should we jump into our uh, knowledge check? Let's do it. Okay, and I believe Laurent's got a link for a poll that you can actually answer the questions as well. Uh, if he finds it, he'll uh, put it at the bottom. But let's go to uh, our first question. What is the component that is yes. required in order to establish a logical connection between Azure Arc enabled resources and Azure? What do you think, Nate? I I know it's a tough one. So we talked, you know, we, we do know it is an agent. So your on-prem servers uh, can communicate with Azure. 
Uh, but the, I think the question is which one, I think you kind of said it's a, you gave a great Lord of the Rings analogy there. Um, so we'll have to see. I am curious to know if the, uh, if our audience gets the answer, right. So make sure you vote at a aka.ms slash polls. Yeah. I think it'd be more, um, confusing if there was a D option that says all of the above. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. I do see one, uh, that's an extension of the primary agent in this list. Um, yes. but, but, uh, you know, we'll have to see if the, if people were paying attention. Yeah. The dependency agent is, uh, is kind of like part of the connected machine agent. So yeah, making sure. All right. So it was, it was C hopefully you guys uh, all got it on and the poll is in the chat. If you, uh, want to, uh, if you missed that link, second question, which is the following operating systems are not supported by Azure arc. Mm. What do you think, Nate? Yeah, well, this is a uh, this is another good one. Uh, you know, we talked about the the different types of servers, and I would say probably the most common types of servers you're going to see in a data center are are the ones we support. So maybe there's one on this list that you don't always see in a uh, in an enterprise data center or something. Yes. Well, currently uh, we support servers, not workstations. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, I've never tried to deploy the agent on the Windows on the Windows desktop, but currently we support servers, which kind of leaves one of those as the outlier here. Right. Let's see. Let's see which one it is. And that was correct. Yeah. All right. Uh, I don't know if uh, Laurent can show the uh, the 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 results. Maybe not, but Maybe that's not. Okay. Yeah, we Maybe can not. we we can move along. So that was our that was our kind of first you know section of the learning path, and uh, now I think we're gonna get into. Oh, here we go. There we go. I went to get the land. So 100% of our voters have gotten it right. So I guess we did our job well. Here we go. <laughs> All right. So now, what are the core management and governance capabilities of Azure Arc? Right, absolutely. Uh, let's let's talk through these. And Pierre, maybe you want to go just uh, quickly to the next slide. But but some of the things we talked about for uh, for Azure Arc are that it it not only you know shows your server in the portal, but it brings these great management capabilities. And so you can organize all of your resources with management groups by subscription, resource groups, or tags, and you get a single inventory of all your assets across your multi cloud in your on-premises estate. And then you can also you know, run reports on these. And so if you're in an IT group and you know that you've got offices and, and, and data centers or server boxes all across, the, all across the world, you can now have one place where you can see all of these. And you get direct access from the Azure portal to most of the management features from these Arc-enabled servers like role-based access control, reviewing logs and server inventory, VM extensions to deploy software agents and run scripts on your server, Azure policy. And I think one of the most important things truly is an Azure Active Directory a system, assigned managed identity for apps running on the server to use when authenticating to other Azure services. You know, that, that Active Directory piece is typically the backbone of all of this infrastructure. And so that being configured in is, is, is really important. And yes, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so those are kind of the main management capabilities. And also, we're going to talk later about the uh, the security and governance. But I think for right now, we're just focusing on management. And I think if we if we head to the next slide, you'll see a great kind of uh, of of graphic that shows you know, hey, here are the all of the various ser uh, services that you can that you can get, and uh, we have them across all of your infrastructure, whether it's running in Azure, in other clouds, uh, or or on prem. Then moving forward, uh, let's see. So, um, since they since the capabilities of Arc reflect the same capabilities of Azure Resource Manager, I mean they're they're practically one and the same. Uh, we can get a, a consolidated view of our resources through the tools that you're already using. So, if you want to see them in the Azure portal, in the CLI, in Power in PowerShell, or a represent a representational state transfer. Uh, for your APIs, 
uh, you can see all of your of your Azure uh, Arc enabled servers in the same tools that you're that you're already using. Yeah, I, I find uh, there's one in the middle there. There's support for searching and indexing using Azure Resource Graph. Yeah. If you're doing any kind of alerting and you want to make sure that's the 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 through either lo, um, um, logic app or or log and uh, log Azure Monitor logs uh, alerting, uh, all of those queries will also address those Arc enabled servers. So it's right. a, a, one more way to make yourself and your team aware of events that are happening. So that's a really big one for me as an operator. I think the biggest advantage I see there is when you are doing your own internal compliance and auditing checks. And depending on your industry or just your own company policies, uh, pretty regularly, you're going to have to make sure, hey, let, let's, let's index and query our own server estate and make sure that everything is up to date. We've got all the latest, uh, you know, policies and, and things like that installed on those. And if you're doing that, particularly maybe you work in financial services or healthcare and you've got laws requiring you to do those types of compliance, this makes that so much easier because you all have one place to do that. Yeah. Cause <laughs> I don't know if that ever happened to you, uh, Nate, but for somebody who's been in operations for, and I'm going to age myself here for almost 30 years, um, you deploy a number of servers and you're running workloads over top and you've got it in multiple locations for load balancing or whatnot. Right. But there's always that one location or that, that one set of servers. That's not quite the same as the others. Right. And then you end up with an error or with like some issues and you start wondering what the hell is going on. That compliance and that policies uh, that you're just mentioning, uh, the way to uh, inventory and, and search and index, all of that kind of like pops those out to right. aging myself with the Hotmail account. Yes, Amy, I have aged myself <laughs> with a Hotmail account, but I've had it for so long, I'm not willing to let it go. Well, well here's, another, here's another good example, too. Uh, maybe folks earlier in their career can identify with. Let's say uh, you, you query your server estate to make sure you're compliant. And this one server pops up that was made in like 2008. You have no idea what it was. The person who deployed that server no longer works for your company. You ask your manager, hey, boss, what, what is this? I, like, can I turn it off? Should we shut it down? They go, no, 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 don't touch that. We don't know what it is, but we don't want to shut it down. You say, okay, well, at least I can write some policies and make sure it, it fits in our compliance, even though we have no clue what it is and we're too afraid to turn it off. That that scenario it comes up every time we're looking at migrations. Right. Uh, and I've, I've developed a, a very easy process to identify the owners. Yeah. Yeah, you unplug it from the network. Don't shut it down. Right. <laughs> just unplug it from the network and wait for somebody to scream. And then you say, ha ha, that's yours now. <laughs> there we go. There we go. That's always a, uh, that's always a fun game. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to our. To our demo. Next yes. Slide. Yeah. I think you're going to uh, pull up uh, how we can use tags, inventory access and extensions uh, for our Arc enabled servers. Now that we've already in our first demo, we put the server into the portal. Yep. Well, let's see if we can use those great management capabilities. Yeah, so uh, Laurent, the um, um, management demo, there we go. So when we're looking at uh, our environment, so now I've got my demo environment. I've got a resource group here called Demo One, and in it, I've got a whole bunch of different uh, machines. This is basically my hodgepodge demo uh, environment that I run on the internet. It's got a whole bunch of different virtual machines. and But now if I really want to just section it and making sure that I can see just the Arc server and the, and the uh, other VMs. I can see that I have three different VMs and then two Arc servers, or basically just servers that are Arc enable. If I click on one of them, I see all of the capabilities that I can do with it, but the tags is what I want to show in this one. By clicking on Ottawa, because that's where my office is, uh, I see all of them. If I see country Canada and I had a whole bunch of it's one more way that you can group and manage your environment. And also the access. 
right now I'm the owner and because I own the subscription, so that's good. But as I mentioned earlier, I want to make sure that my boss, uh, Rick, who may or may not be online right now, uh, has access to view everything, but I don't want him to actually be able to um, touch anything because he's notorious for breaking things. So I add him as a reader to my environment. Uh, of course, if you're setting up everything like that in production, always put a description so that you know what it is for the next time you look at it. And then you add the role assignments. And so now if you were looking at role assignments, we'll see uh, that is uh, actually been applied. So Rick would have access to view everything, but he's also the owner of the subscription too, because he pays for it. But just for the sake of demo, he is now a reader in our environment. So you can see all of the document, uh, all of the, the logs and everything for that machine, but just can't change anything to it, can't change any configuration whatsoever. We also have extensions because now we've installed the, uh, uh, the 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 management extension or the the original extension for Arc, but through it I can now install other extensions. So, for example, the log analytics uh, extension where I will just set okay, so install that agent, connect it to this workplace ID, and I will give it a, a key. And even if you guys uh, cut and copy that uh, extension, it no longer exists after I recorded this. So security is taken care of it deploys it takes a while so i've sped up this uh video so that we can get to the end because sometimes it actually sends that it waits for the agent to pull up grabs that uh task which is deployed this agent with these configuration downloads it executes it and then reports back and in this case it's just done that so i can go to the agent and i can see now i have log analytics connections to that servers where I could con uh, configure what logs I'm going to get and where I'm going to get all of that information and so on. But that will take a while for that information to actually go up. If I go back to my extension, I can now see that the MS Monitor uh, agent has been installed. Mm -hmm. Whew. And of course, log analytics, once you've got it, you've got access to uh, custo queries uh, against all that information. And there's a bunch of predefined um, predefined queries that you can log, log on. So uh, Lauren, can we go back to... Uh... So that was it. it. It was a very quick demo, uh, rapid paced, where easily organize your machines into resource groups and resource groups are nothing but a logical collection of resources that share the same life cycle. Right. So for example, if you've got an application that has a front end middleware and back end and you're connected to, and it has other management uh, parts that are connected with it, you could put them all into one resource group so that you know that that resource group is all connected uh, together. Right. And I want to uh, get to one of the questions that was um, in the chat here that came up. So the question was, uh, laws in different countries, especially for, especially for financial apps, insist on local cloud providers. So installing the Arc agent on the on-prem servers for managing it will not cause any privacy issues. Now, I don't want to commit to knowing the, the unique law of every single country. However, I will say that financial services is one of the, you know, biggest reasons to use Azure Arc if you're dealing with local residency or regulations, because the, the, the data that you're keeping on-prem for your customers, your financial information, uh, doesn't get sent up to Azure. It lives on-premises, but you're able to get the Azure management and, and uh, governance and security capabilities brought down to that on-premises server via the Azure Arc Connected Agent. Um, one kind of great customer example I can think of that, that's on our website, you should go watch the video or maybe Laurent can post it in the chat, is the Royal Bank of Canada. Um, I think they're Pierre, one of the largest banks in Canada and they use Azure Arc for their entire on-premises estate uh, to maintain compliance and, and ensure that they get the best of Azure and things like Azure Monitor and they can group all of their uh, you know VMs and servers wherever they are but they keep all of that data on premises in their own data centers because they want to protect that. Yeah, and the Bank of Canada is like the Federal Reserve in the US, so it's the it's the central bank and it's tied it's arm's length to the actual government, but it is considered government and 
government of Canada as a compliance regulation that says that uh, government data must reside within uh, the Canadian border. Right. So mm -hmm. it applies yeah. to that. Yeah, absolutely. So these are some of the, the Azure VM extensions that I think uh, we, we just talked through. But, uh, you know, things like Azure Key Vault synchronizes certificates from an Azure Key Vault instance to the Azure Arc enabled server. That's a great one. Um, you can get Microsoft Defenders for servers for assessments and vulnerability scanning. And I think we want to keep moving through to make sure we have time to get to our, our, our last few demos. So I'll, I'll kind of churn through these slides. But one of the big ones uh, for, for the management and governance is Azure Policy. So Azure Policy, if you've got stuff running in Azure, you've probably used Azure Policy. And it's a service that manages and evaluates the compliance uh, of their, their servers running in Azure. That same policy is now brought to your on-premises or multi-cloud world. Um, and so it uses, the way policy works is it uses declarative rules based on properties of target resource types, including your Windows and Linux operating systems. And so administrators can apply uh, policy assignment to resource groups, subscriptions, or management groups. So that's why when you group your Azure VMs or your Arc-enabled VMs into resource groups, you can just apply a policy to that entire group or to an entire subscription if you want to do it that way. And so policy makes your, uh, your auditing uh, and your compliance just so much easier. Yeah, Here, and, and it's right there. And it's very flexible because management groups, uh, you can like pick and choose different parts of different subscription, for example, to be in a management group, as long as it's in the same um, hierarchy. Right. I, I think uh, some, some common maybe policies we see are you can, uh, uh, you can identify ARC enabled servers running windows that are not joined to a specific active directory domain services domain. Uh, that will really quickly help you uh, reveal which ones need to be connected properly to AD. Uh, or you can identify servers uh, without the log analytics agent installed. So you can make sure that you can properly query all of those servers. So lots of possibilities. I mean, any policy that's running in Azure can be run on an Arc enabled server as well. Yeah, I really like the one that uh, which everybody should have applied to all of their machines is the one that basically forces you or identifies servers that don't have tags. Right. So you can go back and put the appropriate tags on them. And the tags can be like who's responsible for it. So you don't end up with that 2008 server that nobody knows who's supposed to be uh, taking care of. Um, yeah. So <laughs> policies can be very uh, pragmatic and can be very like compliance based regulation. Uh, you can use them to fit your needs. Mm hmm. And here's a, here's a great visualization kind of, a, of how a lot of these work, right? So, uh, you know, your your governments and your compliance are, are critical uh, to your business with a, with kind of that cloud operating model, mo uh, model. And so with Azure Policy, you can set guardrails, uh, you can do enforcement, and you can ensure that everything's working together. So all of that stuff, which was typically available in Azure, now through Arc can be brought to your various environments. Yeah, and I like the fact that the policy can either just show you what's wrong or can actually uh, have remediation attached to it as well. Right. Absolutely. Cool. All uh, right. I think uh, this we covered this, but uh, why don't we show, uh, you know, if we want to talk about how you can assign Azure policies to Arc enabled servers. I mean, I think the great thing is you can do it all from the portal and, and very easily. Once you create a policy assignment, you'll be able to review the outcome of that policy evaluation on those target ARC enabled servers. So when you create a policy and assign it to a certain resource group or a management group, or even maybe your entire subscription, it gets applied to those ARC enabled servers. Yes. And we do have a demo for that. Oh, great. Let's, uh, let's pull that up. Okay. So Laurent, the uh, ARC policy server. Yes. Let's wait for it to start. So if I'm looking at that same uh, demo environment, I can look at my server 2019 and I can go to policies. I can go through it through the machine or through the top uh, for uh, policies. And then I can assign a policy. And then that's the scope we were talking about earlier where you can uh, say to a specific resource group, to a, a specific tenant or subscription. In this case, I'm only applying it to my uh, demo environment. 
then I can actually exclude certain sessions from that. And then I pick a uh, pol policy. And this one, I want to have the guest configuration policy for Windows. And I apply it. I will, in production, put a description that is uh, something that will tell me why we applied to this policy. And review and create. And then create the assignments. Now, the assignment uh, basically identifies which machines are going to be part or that policy is going to be applied to. It will take a little bit of time uh, to actually start reporting. So if I look at that and I say the, 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 the guest configuration extension is installed, currently I am not in compliance or has not started uh, because the machines, as we mentioned, the uh, ARC agent are polling to get that uh, info. So I'm going to add the same policy or the policy, the appropriate policy for my uh, Linux box uh, using the same uh, scope and exclusion and the policy definition I'm going to use is the guest configuration for the Linux machines. So a guest configuration enabled for on Linux VMs. I'm going to click select. Now, once those policies are assigned and the agent on each of those um, ARC-enabled server pull the, the system and say, hey, do you have a policy for me? That policy will then be downloaded and applied to those machines. So right now it still says compliance state has not started because it will take a little bit of time for that agent to actually get the information, process it, and then report its sessions back. But earlier uh, we talked about patching and you can enable other uh, uh, services. I just wanted to take in that demo because I was already there to show you that I enabled it a while back, but now if I go back to my update management, I can see that I am in compliance, but I am missing four uh, updates on that Linux server. And they're not critical or not security. They're probably just like fixes and stuff. So I can at that point either leave it as is, or I can actually uh, schedule a deployment uh, for that machine. That was it. A policy applying applying policies to those machine is really really simple. Configuring those policies is based on what you need and what your company legally requires. So be sure to talk to your lawyers and to your management as to what you need to actually deploy. Absolutely, Pierre. Do you want to talk about uh, DSC? Yes, so DSC, we talked about this a little bit at the beginning. So desired state configuration, which is a uh, PowerShell kind of service where uh, you implement a declarative uh, state. So you tell those servers under this particular policy, the, the uh, DSC policy, uh, must have IIS installed, must have this installed, or can't have this installed. And then it runs and evaluates it constantly and then if it finds that the service IIS, for example, is not there, then it'll install it or, or turn it on. If it's there, but it's not supposed to be there, we'll turn it off or remove it. So it's a combination of PowerShell scripts and operating systems features that are surfaced up through um, Azure Arc enabled servers. So what you do for your VMs in Azure for DSC, you can extend to your servers uh, on-prem or wherever they may be. Mm -hmm. And then and then lastly, we've got Azure Auto Manage. We talked on this earlier as well, but Auto Manage, uh, which is uh, still in, in public preview, um, is it, it, the ability to automatically bring all of these great Azure services to your virtual machines and automatically uh, enable them. So they will just run, they'll manage uh, drift and 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 correct drift when it's detected, and you'll uh, also in public preview is the ability to use Azure Auto Manage for your Arc enabled servers. And so, uh, if this is something that you know you're using in Azure and you want to bring it to your Arc enabled servers, know that you can do that. And there's some there's some great uh, there's some great capabilities like insights monitoring, update management, guest configuration, log analytics that you can bring to your ARC enabled servers all through auto manage. And uh, that, that's something we're really excited about. And I think that also brings us to our, our knowledge test. So as we finish up uh, this portion of the learn module, 
let's get to our first question, uh, which is which VM extension can the administrator add to Azure Arc enabled servers to start monitoring it with Azure services? Pierre, what do you think here? Uh, that one, like the Qualys extension, uh, allows for monitoring mostly on the uh, Azure Defender, so on the security side of things. But I think in this one, it's probably more uh, on the log analytics uh, part because log analytics is a dependency to uh, Sentinel and Defender because you actually need to get the logs before you analyze them and see if there's vulnerabilities, correct? That is correct. Yes. Yep, As absolutely. Amy would say, X gets the square. <laughs> All right. And our next question. What can the administrator do in order to audit change in order to audit changes the state of operating system of Azure Arc enabled servers? Do you mm. think you would check advisor, search through the activity logs in the portal, or apply the Azure Guest Config based policy? Well, in a way, you could do all three. Mm -hmm. In a way, you could do all three, but I think in this point, because we are we're really thinking about the state of the operating system of those machines, that uh, we would be looking at the guest configuration policies. That's correct. All, all right. right, we've got one know. section left, and uh, let's let's get to it. And so, what are the security and monitoring capabilities of Arc-enabled servers? And I just want to talk about why hybrid and multi-cloud security is so top of mind. I mean, I think it's no secret uh, that uh, innovation and in all of our apps and databases and things that we're developing makes it really hard to have a, a secure landscape. And we're facing, you know, I think everyone has read the news of just the unprecedented attacks that are going across uh, uh, different uh, companies and, and the amount of ransomware out there. So security tools are somewhat disparate as well and aren't well integrated into the DevOps lifecycle resulting in patchwork security. And so all of this adds up to just this overwhelming noise, making it really difficult to actually pinpoint the complex threats from a massive influx of security signals. And so that's why having a simple, secure uh, uh, tool and, and provider for your hybrid and multi-cloud I think is really important. And there's there's kind of three scenarios that we hear a lot from customers of, we need security for our hybrid identity, for our cloud posture management and protection, and our analytics. And this is where Azure Arc can come in. And so you can bring the best tools from Microsoft, like Microsoft Defender for Cloud or Microsoft Sentinel into your hybrid data center, edge, multi-cloud environments, and a really, really comprehensive set of security. Um, and so, Pierre, do you want to, or go ahead. No, I was just, I was going to say, on-prem, uh, there is, are a number of different tools uh, that you mm -hmm. can use, but the, the, one of the greatest thing about this particular set of tools, and especially in Sentinel, is the, is the, uh, the way the AI that's built into the product that could analyze all of the information that you're getting from those multi-cloud and data center and edge devices to actually pinpoint where the attack may be coming from or that's progression through your system. And if you don't have that visibility, if you don't have that, that, that capability of those machines uh, on-prem or wherever they may be that reports up that information, um, there's a blind spot in your environment that this Azure Arc can actually fill. Right, absolutely. And again, it's 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 bringing the power of the cloud into your on-premises estate. And in this way, you can have one service for all of your Azure applications and for your Azure Arc applications that are running uh, on-prem. Yep. So what are the security and monitoring capabilities of Arc-enabled servers? Well, I think... Uh, we're, we're, we're talking through this uh, right now, and we'll uh, get into going deep on Defender and, and Sentinel and things like that. So Microsoft Defender, what are the benefits of Defender for Cloud in, uh, in a hybrid scenario? Let's look at this kind of great Defender slide that we have of what Defender can really do. And so Defender for Cloud is a tool for posture management and threat protection. And so it strengthens the security posture of your cloud resources with the Defender plans, and it protects workloads that are running in Azure, 
on, in your data center and other cloud platforms. And so what it does is it hardens your resources, tracks their security posture, protects against cyber attacks, and really sums things up in some of those really helpful tools that are in Defender, like Secure Score, to let you know, hey, there are some you know, potential weaknesses that you're going to want to address in these areas. And it you can use that to continually improve your score. Pierre, what how have you seen uh, you know Defender and Secure Score used to, to help customers understand their security environment better? Well, Secure Score sometimes is misunderstood. Yeah, uh, it, it's not something that like executives will meet at the uh, uh, at, on the golf course later and say, "My Secure Score is like five hundred and seventy-five. Oh, yours is eight hundred. Oh, you've got me beat." No, it, it because it's it's a score that is dynamic based on how many resources you've deployed and the attack plane that these uh, surfaces uh, may have. So the more resources you deploy, the more your score uh, can be. And the, 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 say if it's 500 on a possible 800, that means that there's 300 points, uh, not necessarily three item, 300 items, Right. that are areas where you have an opportunity to increase that security to cover uh, all of those um, potential entry points. So by Microsoft Defender for Cloud, uh, because it continually assesses and, and secures your environment, the secure score will come up and you, you can see that what your changes uh, are you're, you've done uh, actually apply and increases your score, which means it's not, you're just more secure than you were uh, the last time you did. And there's a question on Learn TV that kind of lines up with that, where it says, uh, Azure Arc seems to be focused on management and governance, but what about deploying an application to multiple servers? Yes, you can deploy multiple uh, uh, application to multiple servers. It's not a, um, it's not a, deployment like sccm would be where you could deploy applications to it but it can facilitate deploying uh um applications and or configurations which configurations deployed to all those servers actually help with your security uh, making sure that you're all configured the same way and so on so it helps you uh, identify and defend uh, your environment yeah and so kind of making this uh, a bit more real is you use Azure Arc uh, to bring the abilities of Defender into your on-premises or multi-cloud estate for threat and vulnerability and management or that, that vulnerability scan, scanner powered by Qualys. Um, and there's, there's so many great features that you can look into. So if you are uh, in, in any environment where you're thinking, hey, we really need to streamline our security. We've got all these different kind of tools that we are trying to patch together that we think, um, you know, uh, cover us. Uh, you should definitely check out Defender for Servers because it, it, it's a huge benefit. And that also leads us into kind of the, the pairing that we see uh, very commonly is Microsoft Defender for Cloud paired with Microsoft Sentinel. So Pierre, do you want to tell us about Sentinel and and, you know, how it works and how customers are using it. Well, Sentinel is a is a uh, uh, SCIM. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, it's a security. It, it basically uses AI to uh, analyze the security of your environment based on the data that it's collected uh, across all of your machines. So, it's if you're collecting data at scale, meaning from all of your VMs, from all of your services, from all of your environments. The more you feed it, the more it can pr more precisely give you environment into uh, there's an attack has been detected and then you can investigate and say, well, it's it's been noticed here. But if we can drag it back to where it actually initiated, which was like a phishing incident or so on. So it it allows you to detect through that collected data, uh, investigate the event right. itself to see why it happened so that you can make changes to one, your policy to uh, user education or all of the above, uh, and then respond rapidly to those events as they're occurring. So that's the, the, the strength of Sentinel is 
because it covers those four major points, giving you a great insight into your security posture. And this sounds like a, a, a Sentinel uh, Learn Live, but all of this is only possible because Arc enabled servers are sending that information back up to the log analytics, right. which is then uh, analyzed and looked at by uh, Microsoft Sentinel. Yeah, absolutely. It's that bird's eye view across your entire hybrid multi-cloud Azure estate. And then I think the last big thing of our, our security and governance is Azure Monitor. You know, Azure Monitor, one of the you know, most widely used tools is uh, it's a centralized dashboard for monitoring uh, all of your servers. You can see, uh, you know, the networks they're attached to. You can identify its name, OS version, build. You can do alerting, log collection, and log analytics. And so it's just this insanely comprehensive solution and uh, and responding to telemetry for your cloud and on-premises environments. And I think that uh, for there's really three key capabilities uh, that we use Monitor for. And so it's uh, metrics, monitoring and metrics visualization. Um, it's querying and analyzing the logs like diagnostic and telemetry, and it provides deep insight into the monitored states of those systems. And last one is alerting and remediation. So alerts uh, notify you of anomalous conditions, and you can configure them to automatically initiate a corrective action to remediate the issue that resulted in the alert. And so if you've got, you know, uh, a server that somehow drifts on-prem, maybe it's one of those old servers we talked about that you have no idea what it does and you're too afraid to unplug, uh, monitor, you can set up uh, configuration states. And so if something does drift, it can automatically be reverted. Yeah. One of the great things, and I'm going to be going a little bit off script here, and uh, uh, Laurent, you could switch to my shared desktop. Uh, I've kind of opened a screen because you mentioned uh, like what some of the things that we do uh, with monitoring. Monitoring allows us, as you mentioned, to, to find uh, all of the information. But I love the fact that if I'm looking at my Linux machine, for example, and I go to Insights, Insights will look at all of the data that that log analytics agent has brought up. And now I can see my my Linux uh, 01 machine, but I can see also every port and every other machine that it's talking to. Mm -hmm. So I can say that on, on port 80, uh, it's talking to, uh, can you connectivity check for Ubuntu? Okay, so I know that this is secure because uh, it's just really checking for updates. I can see that over, over port 53, uh, which server it's going. So I know that, okay, so this is my local DNS server. So, all right, I know I'm not being, uh, I don't have a DNS uh, hijacking um, attack going on um, over port one, two, three, and so on. And I get, get all of the log events of that machine, all of the alerts, if I've got any alerts configured, uh, the connection, and I can all see what the changes have been in that machine uh, over the past uh, uh, little while. So if something has changed, like a, a major service has been turned off manually, that would be a change, and I can investigate that change from that environment. And all of that is possible because Azure Arc enabled server is sending the uh, data that we have uh, in terms of the metrics and performance of that machine and logs, as you mentioned, uh, up to a uh, log analytics workspace that is now part of Azure Monitor and Azure Monitor is surfacing up all of that great, great information. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I think, uh, Laurent, we can go back to, to my slides because that brings us to the end and into our final knowledge check. And so, Let's uh, let's check in on on how, what we learned and and how we're doing. So, what's the simplest method to identify the operating system of an Azure Arc enabled server? So we can uh, integrate the server with Monitor and run a log analytics query. We can use Windows Admin Center to connect each server, or we can use the Arc enabled servers blade in the Azure portal. What what do we think here, Laurent or er, Pierre? Um, well, I think. You can use all three of those. So that's the nice thing about Microsoft right. questions is that there's always 
a bit of an ambiguity here. But in this case, the easiest way is to use the Azure Arc enabled server blade. So you see all your servers and the OS they're running. Yeah, absolutely. And that's exactly what you showed in, in all of your demos, how you can use the portal uh, to see your Arc servers wherever they're running as soon as you get them up there. Yep. And what's the primary Azure monitor related benefit of Azure Arc enabled servers compared with your non Arc enabled servers? I think you know you can capture diagnostic logs, generate alerts, or you can deploy and configure the log analytics agent via the uh, VM extensions. Well, I think C makes B and A possible. Exactly. Right. You can't get the logs unless you have the uh, the log analytics agent via the VM extensions deployed. It's like a chicken and the egg thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, uh, this brings us pretty much to the end. You know, we we talked today about the characteristics of Arc enabled servers, the core capabilities, uh, and our core management and governance scenarios. And so, we really hope that you've enjoyed seeing uh, all the benefits of Arc enabled servers. And there's tons more on Arc enabled Kubernetes, and uh, you know, governing your Kubernetes clusters that run on prem, Arc enabled data services, Azure Stack HCI. And so for, uh, for more information and things that we talked about, we really hope that you take the uh, Learn module on Arc Enabled Servers. And we have tons of resources that you can go and, and check out and, and look at. So uh, be sure to take a look at the Learn module and, uh, and reach out to us with, with any questions uh, that you may have. Yeah, and keep an eye on the uh, Learn Live page for the rest of the uh, Azure Hybrid uh, cloud study hall series. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you all so much for joining. We know uh, Build is coming up. We've got these other Learn Live study halls coming up. So, so many great things uh, for folks to uh, uh, sign up for, learn more, and, and continue to skill up. All right. All right. So, I'm Pierre Roman, a cloud, art, a cloud advocate at Microsoft. And Nate Waters, product marketing manager for Azure Arc and Microsoft. Thank you all so much. Yeah, and Twitters are just here if you want to get yeah. in touch with us. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us, people. And uh, have a great day. See you around.